Hi guys, welcome to Antique Sprinklers. Today we're going to be talking about the world's first pop-up impact sprinkler. And no surprise, it came to us from Rainbird Corporation. Uh, as most of you know, uh, Rainbird got its start uh, when Orton Engelhart uh, developed the first impact sprinkler and patented it in 1933 and then teamed up with Clement Lafretra uh, to create Rainbird. And uh, they manufactured and sold sprinklers for, uh, together for quite a while out of uh, Clement's barn uh, until uh, Orton decided to go back to um, growing uh, 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 fruit uh, there in, uh, in California. And so it actually was not long after uh, the development of, of that sprinkler in 1933 that uh, Rainbird came up with the idea to take the sprinkler, put it on a spindle, and uh, encase it in a, a, a bronze body so that it could be installed um, flush mount with the ground. And so this is a great innovation for golf courses and athletic fields and and uh, very large turf areas. And um, the sprinkler initially uh, would um, pop up under water pressure, just like they do today. But in this case, there was no, um, no spraying. It was just a gravity that would cause it to retract. And when you're talking about a heavy brass sprinkler, you've got a good chance of that thing um, positively retracting each time. Although, as any of you who have seen um, the, the same approach taken with spray heads, a little bit of sand, some grit, whatever, will cause this thing to hang up. A lawnmower will hit it, and then you get yourself, uh, it's time to get a new blade on your lawnmower and a new sprinkler and all kinds of things. But uh, for the time, in 1941, this was quite an innovation. Um, there were pop-up sprinklers before that for the turf market. I know that uh, Thompson had installed uh, what would amounted to basically a gear-driven um, pop-up uh, in the Rose Bowl uh, in the 1930s. And Dayton had a, uh, a, a turf pop-up that covered large lawn areas and, and um, golf courses and sports fields uh, that, that basically looks like an alien coming out of the ground. It's the most amazing thing you ever saw. So the idea that something would pop up and then retract to, um, uh, to finished grade was, uh, was not new by any means, but um, putting an impact sprinkler inside uh, that kind of setup uh, was, uh, was revolutionary. And in fact, you know, you still buy this same design basically, but with a spring and some other, you know, usually plastic now uh, cases, um, you still buy this same design today and see it all over the world. And so uh, some of the things that I uh, really um, tip my hat to Rainbird from uh, the very start on this thing, the inlet on this guy is uh, one inch. And um, I'll put the, um, the uh, performance chart up uh, it's from my uh, 1941 uh, L.R. Nelson catalog. As I've mentioned in other uh, videos, L.R. Nelson and Rainbird um, collaborated together in something called Rainy Sprinkler Sales for several decades, selling both companies' products. And uh, so I'm happy that I, I have the 1941 catalog because that was the first time this would have been available. And in any event, um, what you'll see in that performance chart, that this thing puts out somewhere between 2.8 and 7 gallons per minute. And uh, there's really no reason to have a one inch inlet for that unless you want to make one body and then just change the sprinkler by changing the guts out. And um, Rainbird continues that approach to this day. Um, and, and they've done it very, very consistently in between. So, you know, a, a 47, a 4151, uh, these sprinklers are, are changed just by changing the internals in them. You use the exact same body, which is smart. It's uh, economically smart and uh, from a maintenance perspective or if I'm a contractor going out to work on different projects, it, it makes what I have to stock much simpler. Um, so I got this guy from Wisconsin, uh, Michigan actually, not Wisconsin. And um, it was in amazing shape. It just had a very heavy patina on it that I took off. And uh, I've got a couple of pictures I might include about, uh, you know, with before and after there, but it's, it's not super dramatic because I don't think this thing was ever installed, frankly. Um, it uh, shows no signs of, of what I would expect to have had happened to this thing in the ground, especially on the lid. Normally you're running lawnmowers over these things and, 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 and they take a beating over time, but this shows um, no ill effects from having been in the ground. So I'm gonna guess it never was. Uh, there's casting marks all over it, but that's very common in, in you know bronze case sprinklers. But if you think this video, please like it. And if you wanna see uh, more sprinkler videos, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe. That tends to just show more people the sprinklers. This is not a money-making operation by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it's just something I really enjoy doing. And, and I started it because I couldn't find what I was looking for out there in terms of you know videos and pictures of, of old sprinklers. And uh, there's a handful of us who do it. Um, on my channel, I have a playlist that shows some uh, videos from other people uh, that I really uh, I like their videos and uh, I need to update that I haven't in a while but it's a place where you can find uh, other folks doing kind of what I do here uh, doing it better in my opinion um, so uh, 
please make sure you check out them as well. Uh, but without further ado, let's see this thing working. 